Welcome to the Researcher YouTube channel. My name is Jorge and in this video I will introduce you to the media package inside the Modelica standard library. I will try to do an example related to dry steam. Open the Modelica standard library and try to find the ideal steam. We go under media water and ideal steam. So here we see what's written inside. We need to find what's inside the ideal gases, single gases, H2O. For that you need to go inside media, ideal gases, single gases H2O. Here you see the code written inside. So let's try to find out what's inside this data. Again you have the path written here and we can see that we have a data record with values for water, in this case steam. Going back to our ideal steam, we can find the fluid constants here. So again, we follow that path, which you can see here again, and we can see what's inside. You can see a reference here that we have already seen. Now, let's try to explore these packets and see if there is any model or example inside. You can see that there is no example, but if you jump one level above, there is this model, base properties. If you open it, they already compute some of the values, such as the enthalpy and so on. They use functions with inputs from the data. If you don't know about records and functions, I will leave a couple of links to previous videos so you can know the basics. Now, if you validate this model, you get an error. This is not a model that you can use as it is. If you go now to the examples, you will find one called Ideal Gas H2O and it has a medium inside. If we open that example, you can see that they declare records and functions using values inside those records. If we open now the thermodynamic state record here, you can see the values that it has inside. It contains the state variables for ideal gases, absolute pressure and temperature. The way to use the media library is to find out the records that you need and the functions that you need for computing the interesting values for your model. In my case, I've chosen the thermal conductivity. I believe it gives a more intuitive idea than other variables such as enthalpy. The thermal con conductivity value represents in some sense how fast 
energy will move from one medium to another or how energy will move from A to B, for example. The path for this function can be seen here, but you can see that the thermal conductivity lambda is computed using this function. So open it and look what it's inside so you can find out what that function needs for computing your value. It needs as input the constant pressure heat capacity, the dynamic viscosity eta. Keep in mind that depending on your reference sometimes this value is called mu instead of eta. And then the method for solving and then the method for computing the thermal conductivity. Notice that you also need data from a record. Finally, the value that you will obtain is your thermal conductivity lambda. I have written a small model here representing an example of dry steam. First of all, you need to use the record with all the properties of the steam. It is as simple as dragging and dropping it But it is important that you remember to give it a name. As you can see, by writing it this way, we don't get any errors. Although I am not going to use it because I already have one here. But I will keep it so you can follow the example. Then we need our thermal conductivity, lambda. Instead of declaring it as a real value, we declare it as a variable with SI units. For doing so, you can go to the Modelica standard library, find the units packets, and find the SI unit that you need. Here you have a lot of types that represent a variable with units. It is as easy as dragging and dropping the type and then giving it a name so it represents and then giving it a name so it represents a variable. I will not use it so I will remove it. The rest of the model is very straightforward. I just call the function with some inputs. The value of CP that for instance you can find here the value of the dynamic viscosity eta, our method for computing it, and very important, the name of a record dot data. So we obtain the values from there. Simulate now, and you can see the values of lambda here. This is the way of using the media library there is a lot of options available and it's a more advanced topic 
but it should get you started. I chose the values by myself, so they might not be completely correct. Keep in mind that you need to have the values with the proper units and within a correct physical range. Thank you so much for watching and see you in future videos.